We're going to show you a few of the features of our Rock Hard 4x4 manufactured bumper. All of our bumpers have a quarter inch thick winch plate that's integrated into the bumper on a low winch. On a high winch bumper, the winch mounts up on top. Now on a high winch bumper, you can use it with or without a winch and not have the opening inside. It does come with a fair lead mount for that style of bumper. All of our D-rings come through the bumper and they're one inch material welded on both sides, front and back. All of them have a hoop. They are available on a special order with or without a hoop, if that's what you're looking for. All of them do have the light tabs, which is designed for a 10-inch bar light or individual lights, and that's just personal preference of what you're looking for. I want to show you how we're going to remove the factory front bumper. Whether it's a steel or a plastic front bumper, they remove pretty much the same. You're going to start off by removing the two plastic clips that are on each side here that hold this plastic piece in place. Then you will remove the lower air dam. On some of the steel bumpers, they're held in with plastic clips. Some of them are held in by a bolt, which takes a 13 millimeter to remove. Uh, whichever you have, whether it's the 13 millimeter style or the clips, go ahead and remove the factory piece of plastic here and the lower air dam. To remove these plastic clips, you can either take a screwdriver from the top and pull them out, or you can just go from the bottom and pry the whole thing out. You will not be reusing this piece. On this particular Jeep, it has the factory steel style. The plastic style just has some clips that hold it in place. We're going to go ahead and remove the bolts here across the front and the two lower ones here. This will remove the air dam. Once you've removed the air dam, it makes it easy to access the bolts. There's four bolts, two on each side, two on the inside of the frame rails, two on the outside of the frame rails on both sides. That holds the main bumper in place. Go ahead and remove those nuts now. They require an 18 millimeter socket to do so. Now that you've removed the eight mounting nuts that hold the bumper onto the frame, go ahead and unclip the fog lights. You will do that by pressing on this side and removing the wire. Go ahead and remove your front bumper off the front of the frame. Now we're going to go ahead and get a pair of wire cutters and go ahead and remove the wiring out of the back of the factory bumper and then we'll show you how to take the fog lights out. On this particular bumper, the fog lights are held in by a 10 millimeter. Use a socket and extension to remove them. Majority of the bumpers are still this, are designed this way. You will also take a pair of wire cutters and cut the factory plastic clips that hold the wiring in place. Go ahead and do that now. When we're talking about the fog lights here, we're going to talk a little bit about the installation of them. On a standard JL or a JT truck, they have a four bolt fog light, LED, that bolts right in without any complications. There's, a, there's around five different fog lights that we've found being used on the JL, JT trucks. And I'm, the two that are hardest to install are the two that I have here, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. First of all is this style that has just two mounting holes on each side. This style does need a little bit of trimming on the plastic on the lower corners and it, so that it allows it when it's mounted in to clear the angle of the bottom of the bumper. I actually just touched this on a grinder. It's plastic. It goes away real quick so that you can match the angles up and that way you'll be able to use the self-tapping screws that you just use a 5 16 wrench to install here. On the other style, which is the halogen style, as you notice, you can see that the ang you have a different surface mountings for, for mounting them. You do have to trim a little bit right here on this outer ear. That gives it clearance. And the other thing, we will use this little Z bracket to allow for the hikes to match up. Once you've mounted the Z bracket in the bumper here and onto the light, you'll be able to install that in this situation. You'll just go ahead and use the self-tapper screws here, here, and down to here. One other thing I do want to mention is some of the fog lights do need to be swapped left to right. If it is an LED configuration, make sure you have this unit area to the top of the light. One other thing is our factory wiring, you'll take out of the bumper and it will reach on your Rock Hard 4x4 bumper without modification. So here we're showing the halogen installed. We've went ahead and mounted it on this side with a self-tapping screw in the hole. The Z bracket here, you can see how it goes. We've mounted that first and then this outer side here. Now that we've installed the fog lights in the back of the bumper, we're going to talk a little bit about which hardware you're going to use. 
One thing about the rock hard 4x4 bumpers is we space them away from the end of the frame horns and it bring the bolts through the front of the bumper. When we go through the front of the bumper, what that allows us to do is to use a series of our different tow bar brackets that we offer. Whether you have a Blue Ox, a Demco, a Reese, or a Roadmaster, or a Falcon, or a Sterling, whatever brand of tow bar that you have, we pretty much make majority of the brackets for them. Our brackets go right onto the face of the bumper, which is right through to the end of the frame. This allows us to still be towing off the end of the frame. When you use a base plate setup, they come off of the bottom side of the frame up around the factory bumpers. This makes it an unstable, wobbly situation where they have to run a bar a lot of times in between the bracketry. One is the bracketry is low and you're always hitting it if you're out wheeling. With our brackets right on the face of the bumper, which is right on the end of the frame, they become extremely solid and make it a very easy to hook up situation where you just run a pin on each side. The hardware that comes with the tow bar brackets is a little longer than the factory hardware that comes with the bumpers. Go ahead and use the longer bolts on the tow bar ones. You're gonna have some washers and the nuts that go on the end of the frame. Now, we have some spacers here. You have a total of eight spacers, four on each side. There is a different nut, this little thin jam nut, versus the regular half inch nylock nuts. This one here goes on the driver's side frame rail on the inside upper, and we'll talk about that, and that's for clearance on the Xeon and larger series of winches. Um, we have two plastic plugs. They will go in the face of the bumper over here, which those openings are for your high lift jack. If you wanna lift the front of your Jeep, you can take the plastic plug out, put the jack right in there, lift up your front of your Jeep. There's two straps. These straps are included only on the aluminum series of bumpers. They go on the bottom side of the winch plate as a washer. Let's go ahead and get on the installation of this. We're gonna set the bumper onto the end of the frame. We're gonna use the bat bolts with our tow bar brackets. We're gonna use the long series of spacers, the washers and the nuts. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and hang this bumper here on the end of the frame and set it there for a second. A couple of the questions I get from customers once in a while is, can I mount the winch on the bumper prior to installation? On some particular winches, yes you can, but your larger winches like your Warren Xeon and stuff, they're actually wider than what Jeep allowed as far as the frame horns, so you have to install them afterwards. So you wanna set the bumper in place, set your winch in place as we're doing the bolt-on. You're gonna install the Fairlead using the hardware that comes with the winch. Now, bolt with a washer on, and this is gonna go onto the front of the bumper. And then here on the inside, you're gonna put a lock washer and a nut. Go ahead and repeat the process here on the other side. Go ahead and tighten those down in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and set the winch in the bumper. You're gonna go ahead and set it in place here. Then we will go ahead and take the straps and the hardware and put it in. One thing to not forget is to make sure that when you put it on, you put these square nuts in the inside. Now we're gonna, on an aluminum bumper, we're gonna go ahead and use the strap, the nut, I'm sorry, we're, we went ahead and installed the square nut in the winch. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the strap as the washer, another washer, a lock washer, and the bolt. Repeat the process on all four holes. Be with the winch still loose, I go ahead and bring the rope through the face of the bumper. The reason I've done that is sometimes you gotta move the winch around a little bit, this allows you to do it. Now that you've went ahead and put this through the face of the bumper, go ahead and tighten the bolts that hold the winch into the bumper. Now, majority of winches don't come with the, with the negative installed. You're gonna go ahead and install the negative wire onto its location, which is majority of the time right here on the back side of the winch. Now, go ahead and bring the electrical through the front of the bumper so that it's out of your way. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take the bumper, turn it around, and slide it on the end of the frame horns. 
Now we're going to set it on the end of the frame just like this. Now, if you'll notice, this particular style of winch, the Warren VR or Evo series, fits in between the frame rails. This allows us to install the winch prior to the installation of the bumper. We're going to go ahead and install the spacers. Now, in your hardware kit, you're going to have a long spacer and a short spacer. Primarily 99% of the time, you're going to use a long spacer. The short spacers are designed for some of the imported winches have a little bit um, different depth to them and if you need a little extra grill clearance you could install a washer or the sh uh, short spacer along with the long spacer but in most cases with the Xeon winches and the normal worn winches you're going to install just the long spacer. Today on this build we're using a set of the Blue Ox brackets now you can put these on the upper or the lower mounting locations. We're going to put these on the lower mounting location and we're going to install the half inch lock nut using a three quarter inch wrench on the back side. Before we tighten this down, we will go ahead and install all of the hardware. And that will do now. We've had a couple customers ask if we utilize the braces that go between the frame and the frame horn. Yes, we utilize the factory brace. There's no reason not to. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten these. We're going to use a 5 16 Allen and a 3 quarter end wrench. One thing to keep in mind is the bumper has a little bit of slot in the front. The reason that is that sometimes the bodies aren't perfectly on the frame, so you can move the bumper side to side as needed. A good visual is look on each side going down here and here and square it up with the front of your grill. Now that we've installed the bumper on the front of our JL or JT truck we, with our tow bar brackets here, we have a couple pieces. These here are plugs that go in the face of the bumper on the lower angle. This is for the high lift jack. If you need to lift your vehicle, these plug those holes. And remember when you're mounting your winch and on the aluminum bumper to use these as the washers on the bottom side. Next, we're going to go ahead and fit the winch into the cavity here and put the bolts in from the bottom. 